students in the last class we seen uh, what is velocity and what is average speed <coughs> what is average speed and velocity and uh, relationship and how that uh, velocity is how that velocity is depends on displacement how displacement is how displacement is going to change and how we are consider the change rate of displacement as velocity and what types of velocities are like initial velocity and final velocity are uh, present initial velocity or final velocity are possible for a moving uh, object like so these all kinds of things are in the last class we completed and today in this class i told you on the last uh, class uh, that is what is average velocity we not completed in last class what is average velocity let's see what is average velocity first so average velocity is nothing but the number of velocities i mean total velocities by number of velocities total velocities by number of velocities that is nothing but average velocity so here after completion of that velocity here we are having some doubts <coughs> what kind of doubts so I, from starting onward the motion lesson starting onwards we learn different types of quantities here different types of quantities such as length distance displacement how these are compared and how these are uh, compared by like uh, vector quantity and uh, scalar quantity so what is vector quantity what is scalar quantity how what is speed how speed uh, uh, sorry how average speed is calculated uh, how average speed also speed should be calculated and second thing is what is velocity how velocity is possible for an object so how displacement is going to change these aspects in this all those aspects we are uh, taken some examples but how to measure average velocity here does average velocity refers displacement so let me give you one example here nothing but average velocity just now i told you <coughs> for a formula purpose i am telling you after that i'll give you one example also num total or sum of velocities so sum of velocities by number of velocities i told you how many velocities are possible there are two types of velocities are there, like initial velocity and the final velocity initial velocity is starting velocity final velocity is about the ending velocity beginning ending both velocities are if one car is moving on the road with the initial velocity of 15 kilometers per second for 15 kilometers per 15 meters per second a 10 meters per second it's very huge no 15 meters are not possible so 5 meters at 6 meters per second and the ending velocity is the <coughs> the last velocity ending velocity is final velocity is when car is going to stop and that time car has so 10 meters per second so car has a water 10 meters per second so how would we calculate that so let's see first what is average velocity we you know how to draw a velocity vectors for a an object for an path okay after completion of that i'll show you that also average velocity i told you number uh, sum of velocities average velocity equals to initial velocity initial velocity plus final velocity initial velocity plus final velocity by 2 initial velocity plus final velocity by 2 nothing but average velocity equals to v plus u by 2 v plus u by 2 does it equal for displacement so i mean uh, if we are applying that same formula for average velocity it's maybe the total change rate of total change rate of displacement total change rate of displacement by time taken total rate of displacement by time taken it refers v equals to s by t or nothing but what is v here v plus u 
by 2 equals to s by t. That means it is equal both are. Why I am telling you the relationship is in next purpose to deriving equation purpose. These are very important. Relations are very important here. Understand how these relations are uh, vary for the word different quantities. That, that is also very important to us. So average velocity equals shall we write like this? Absolutely. Is it possible? Possible. Got it. What is average velocity? Just keep uh, that uh, formulas in your brain. Very important in future purpose. These are very very important to us. What is velocity? Uh, what is initial velocity? What is final velocity? What is average velocity? What is the relationship and how we can draw? Uh, how we can draw that uh, displacement by using velocity? By using velocity, how we can draw the displacement? By using displacement, how we can draw the velocity? These are the what uh, important relationships to us. These are continuous for remaining chapters also. For uh, as example. Second chapter is completed, motion lesson, maybe say completed, it's completed. And next chapter will be going to start, that is motion loss, our third chapter. What are the things you all learned from second chapter, is all those are appears in that chapter also. Motion, motion loss, just upgraded. When you are going to discuss about gravity, so the gravity is completely depends on these laws. Overall, the motion physics, motion physics we can call that as what a motion of physics so these things what you are learning in this season i mean in this lesson that was continuous to con continuous motion on a plane motion on a straight plane motion on a curved plane like these all those are in coming chapters in the future so maybe you are going to select uh, science as your occupational course in that these are very important very easy but concentration and understanding levels are important to us why because it completely looks like what mathematics but not exactly mathematics somewhat mathematics understand so that's what keep concentrate on how we are uh, showing relationships here that is important to us and the next topic is uh, i hope you understand what is average velocity so if whenever uh, you've seen that question like what is average velocity average velocity term maybe you are here so we'll uh, memorize that as uh, v plus u by 2 that is average velocity and the relationship is nothing but s by t it's a relationship with displacement it is equals to displacement also like you have to memorizing those relationships when you are here average velocity term clear and next go to the intestine your speed <laughs> okay okay let me uh, show you that how we can draw the velocity vectors huh? after completion of that let's go to intestine your speed So, if one is stone <coughs> thrown into the air, one stone is thrown into the air. So, say this point as O. From here, one stone is thrown into the air in this direction. And it's reached the maximum height. It's reached maximum height and uh, falling back and reach it to ground it's covered s distance so at a point at a point at a point the stone fall back <coughs> so what is the distance is covered here s distance now tell me if anything may be thrown into air if anything, any object, not only stone, if anything, you, you should be maybe stone, uh, thrown into the air. It allows one kind of path. As for example, the chalk piece, when I am thrown into air, the chalk piece allows this path. But not exactly when you are thrown into air, like it reaches maximum height, it not should be going to fall back at the same position. It, this case is not possible. Okay, it moves the, it reaches the what, maximum height and coming back, back to the water ground. So, this shape is called as parabola shape. Just keep in your brain this additional point. Whenever you are thrown any objects into air, any objects into air that allows parabola shape. That allows water, parabola shape like this shape is allowed. So, the direction is showing like this. I mean, this direction you are thrown. It reached maximum height 
and coming back. Now tell me, in every instant, the direction may be going to change or not here. At this plane, we, are, we will uh, understand two things here. So here, when you are throwing that object into air, it allows a parabola shape and it's covered some distance. So it is first of all displaced. This is a distance. Only one plane. How many quantities are possible? Let's observe. This is a distance. The distance covered by an object with direction. With direction. Displacement. How many times displacement is changed here? velocity vectors are possible or not absolutely these are the velocity vectors so displacement from here to here from here to here from here to here this mana this much of displacements are possible the change rate of displacement is velocity and velocity also we'll understand by using this diagram got it just a uh, example to understand how we can draw the velocity vectors for a given path not only this path you can take any path even um, you are home to school, the distance between home to school. Just observe when you are uh, walking across that, when you are moving to school, just observe that how many directions are I am going to change and how many turns are I am, I am going to take like. So you can just imagine the direction is going to change or not, how many times I was displaced. So this is a based on our day to day experience only. If you are having a small concentration on that, we will get examples. No, we will get the what better examples to understand. Okay, let's see interstanio speed. What is interstanio speed? Do you know what is interstanio speed? Do you hear before that? What do you know very well about? So maybe you know driving. You know how to drive uh, drive bike, or your father may be driving a bike. You just absorb that speedometer. The speedometer shows what a speed, what is the speed maintained by a vehicle. Speed maintained by a vehicle can uh, appear into the speedometer. It shows 40 kilometers or 50 kilometers, 60 kilometers, 80 kilometers and so on like. But in every time and you know, continuously to watching what speed I am maintaining is not possible. Okay, what is the speed I am maintaining? Uh, 20, 30, 40, 50. So if you are concentrated on speedometer, how can you drive? It is not possible. But sometimes randomly we look at the water speedometer. So okay, what speed I am maintaining? Okay, 60 kilometers. Uh, okay, 40 kilometers. Like randomly, it's not. I mean, continuously, not possible. Continuously, I mean, we are not uh, measuring any fan speed, uh, fan uh, how many rotations are taking place with respect of time. So that is observation. Why? Because you do, you are not doing any work. But while you are driving, that is a kind of work. You must concentrate on road. You must concentrate on those vehicles are moving across you. That is very important. At the time, we will not uh, observe continuously what is the speed maintained by a body, uh, speed maintained by a vehicle. So randomly we will check what speed I am maintaining. Understand? So at that particular instant, in that particular instant, when you are look at that speedometer, the speedometer shows some amount of speed to you. At that instant you are, you are in the speed of? In the speed of that. Understand? For example, I am driving a bike. I am just presently I am driving. And that time, so randomly I check it. I just check the water. What is the speed maintained by me? So, okay, 60 km. At that instant, I am maintaining 60 km speed. So, we can call that as interstanio speed. I hope you understand my example here. I am just trying to explain you clearly. So, in a particular situation, maybe you are observed. Maybe you have observed. What is the speed maintained by a vehicle? What is the speed maintained by a vehicle? That vehicle, particular speed at that instant. So now, now I am on the bike, I am just driving. So at this uh, in that case, just I am randomly, I look at the water, speedometer. That speedometer showed me 60 kilometers. I am maintaining 60 kilometers. Okay, I am going in 60 kilometers. At that instant, what is the speed of bike? 
60 kilometers. What is intestinal speed? Intestinal speed. So, as an instant, that instant, what is the speed maintain a body? That speed maintain a body, maintained by a body, maintained by a body, that is intestinal speed. Got it? So, intestinal speed is nothing but very simple. So, whenever you are checking randomly your speed of by at that instant, that speed is called intestinal speed. So, let me give you one example here. How to calculate intestinal speed at that particular time? So, here one car is covering some distance, is covering some distance on the road uh, with 15 kilometers per hour. 15 kilometers per hour, the car speed is 15 kilometers per hour. At that instant, the car speed is what? 15 kilometers per hour. When you are observed, speedometer from the car uh, display and that time we will get the what? What is the distance is maintained? So, let me give you that example. So, what is the distance covered entire journey of a car? So, take out the distance on y axis of a graph. Distance. Clear? Distance and uh, I am taking on x axis. Time I am taking on x axis. So, okay, here three distances S1, S2, S3. The three distances I just consider like S1, S2, and S3. But S3 is why you are taking S3? Why not S2 here? I am telling you the that. So, T1, T2, T3, three time periods here. So, at the first instant, I just covered S distance in the time period of T1. Just try to understand, it is like some confusious. So, S1 distance I just covered in the T1 time period and S2 distance. So, the question is given like this, at S2 distance, sorry, at that S2 distance covered in the time period of T2, T1, T3 and T2. Now, the question is, what is the distance covered, what is the S3 distance covered, time period of T3? So, it is simply we can say like average speed, uh, do here before that average speed like to number of total distance, total distance by time taken that is average distance we know very well, but here the same phenomena we are observing. So, at these two instants I just have a calculation, I checked the calculations here what is the speed maintained by a car, I checked out what is the speed maintained by a car at S1 distance and S2 distance in the time period of T1 and T2. But I want T3, how can you calculate that? You know, if you are taking average between T1 and T2 and S1 and S2, we will get S3. Is it right? So, the formula for average speed average speed equals to S2 minus S1 by T2 minus T1. By applying that, do we get that what is T3 and S3? Sure, that is equals to what average speed only. So, average speed at that instant is, average speed at that instant is S2 minus S1 by T2 minus T1. So, total distance minus what is the minimum distance? We will get S3 and the total time period minus total time period minus 
So what is the time period? In that first instant, we'll get third time period. I mean average time period. Average speed equals to s2 minus s1 by t2 minus t1. Got it? So next, let's see the uh, new quantity. Uh, that is nothing but acceleration. So what is acceleration? So we completed different types of quantities like length, velocity, speed, ve length, velocity, speed, displacement, distance. These kind of quantities are completed. And in this uh, season, we are going to learn the last quantities. That is acceleration. Let's see what is acceleration. What is acceleration? So first of all, definition is important to us. Acceleration. What is acceleration? You know, it's a very familiar word to us. Acceleration is. So mostly we'll use the acceleration as accelerator. Accelerate. So but that is not accelerate. It's accelerate. So, well, drive uh, bike or car. So, give some acceleration for moving uh, speed. So, give some accelerator, give more acceleration. So, we'll use that kind of words, but it's not acceleration, it's acceleration. Acceleration. Got it? Acceleration. So, what do you mean by acceleration here? So, in the view of physics, I'm giving you that definitions in the view of physics only. Why? Because whenever you are writing on um, uh, P, uh, examination purpose, we'll use physics terms and that's what the definition is only important to us. But understanding purpose of what is acceleration is acceleration is nothing but here speed is going to change when we are accelerate. Speed is going to change. Is it right? So when we are giving more acceleration, speed going to more. If we are, uh, uh, I mean, uh, making less that, we are not giving acceleration. Speed going to less nothing but speed differentiation here increasing or decreasing so that depends on acceleration nothing but let's see what is acceleration according to the view of uh, physics so let's define that the rate of change of the rate of change of velocity the rate of change of velocity called acceleration and it's denoted by it's denoted by small a it's denoted by small a and units for acceleration units meter per second square or meter, meter, second was meter, second was. These are the units, units for acceleration. Units for velocity, meter per second. Units for displacement, meter per second. Units for speed, meter per second. But units for acceleration, meter per second square or meter per second was. Now let's see that the rate of change of velocity called acceleration, it's denoted by A. So here, Acceleration is defining based on velocity change. If displacement going to change, if maybe displacement going to change, that is called as velocity. If velocity may be going to change, that is acceleration. Got it? The change rate are, when the change rate is going continuously, the quantities are going to continuously. So velocity going to change, acceleration. If displacement going to change, that is velocity. So how we can understand? What is acceleration? So let's take one path. So AB is a one path. Now displacement. How many displacements are possible? One, two, three, four.
so 13 are possible apart from this uh, path now see first displacement is done here from here to here let's draw the uh, directions first okay So this many times the person is displaced, the object is displaced. So now at the same time, from here to here, once displacement, from here to here, here to here, like many times displacement changed, we can consider that as a velocity. How many times velocity is changed here? The velocity also going to change, is it right? I mean, uh, for example, one bike is covering from this, this, uh, this point to this point. If it's moving with some speed, the speed is going to vary or not? One turn is there. If you are maintaining 50 kilometers per hour here, when you are moving, when you are turning that, you are maintaining same speed. No, the speed may be going to decrease. You are go, you you will you are going to apply some brakes. Acceleration going to change there. Velocity also changed here. So like in this aspect, many times velocity also changed. So how many times velocity changed? The rate change of velocity called acceleration. The rate change of velocity called acceleration. Got it? So acceleration is denoted by a a equals to rate change of velocity. No, rate change of velocity del v by del t. Del v by del t. Rate change of velocity by time taken. That is acceleration. And in the next class, let's see what is the formula for acceleration and what is deacceleration. Acceleration, okay. What is deacceleration? How we can define deacceleration and what are the units for deacceleration and formula for deacceleration. Let's continue in next class. Okay? Thank you.